Welcome back everyone. A couple years ago I did a video about equipping your bench on a $2,500 budget. And well, some people may not have that kind of money to spend and I kind of have to eat my own words because on my bench here I have not spent nearly that kind of money. So I'm going to talk about equipping your bench for under a thousand dollars in this video. And this is geared to mainly the weekend electronic hobbyists. If you get into specialty things like if you have to work with higher frequencies, you might need more specialist expensive gear. So we're going to keep it to the electronic hobbyist who you know just has a general interest in the hobby and doesn't want to spend a ton of money on a bench. So we'll go through some pieces of gear here and see how much you can spend and still get away with reasonable equipment. And to start off, I will begin with an oscilloscope. To me, this is a critical piece of gear. I would not skimp too much on that because it's so important, it's so versatile, it allows you to see the dynamics of the signal, and you do run into a lot of signals if you're dealing with electronics. Very important to be able to see what's going on in the circuit. I would spend most of your budget on the oscilloscope. I would tend to gravitate towards a digital storage scope because of the functionality that they have. You know, pretty much any modern scope is going to be a DSO. You could pick up an older analog scope. You know, it's nice to have a scope than no scope at all. But the DSO has so much functionality built in. You can save data, analyze it later. You have extra functions like with this scope, you have the spectrum analyzer mode and a, you know, a bunch of acquisition functions and things like that and math functions. Some scopes have a built-in multimeter or even a function generator, though those tend to be more expensive. I want to keep the budget around $400 for the oscilloscope. Four or five hundred, I'll say. This Rigel or Rigel, however you pronounce it, this is an older scope. It's been on the market for 10 plus years. It's a very good scope with all the bugs shaken out. You can get it for under $300 now. However, some of the new scopes, the entry level scopes that have come on the market in the last few years are really impressive. I would spend a little bit more money than what you could get this scope for. You know, spend four to five hundred dollars. You get a scope with a bigger, higher resolution, intensity graded display. The functionality is going to be similar, but you might get extra features like more channels, um, serial decoding functions, and you know, other little extra functions they may add in for you. If you do purchase an oscilloscope, I would go with a brand that has a presence in your country if you have to send it in for advanced calibration or some type of service. For example, this Rigel scope here, Sigilent, Tektronix, or Keysight, they're going to have service depots in the United States where I'm at. So if I had any of those brands, I could send them in and have them serviced. And on to the power supply. This power supply has served me well for over 30 years. Dual channel, but quite limited. This has the analog meter. You have to switch around to see the voltage and current. 15 volts max per channel at one amp. So it was kind of limited with the type of projects I work on. So that's why I bought the Siglin here. It has three channels. Uh, two of these channels, 32 volts, 3.2 amps. I can uh, serial them for higher voltage or dual split type supply. Parallel for more current. Then I have the third channel for uh, lower logic type voltages. You may not need a power supply as nice as this one. You might need one better, I don't know. But you can get a decent single channel supply that displays the current and voltage has up to 5 amps of current for example and may go up to 20 or 30 volts on the output 
for in the 100 to 150 dollar range but for what I do this power supply was the best fit for me the next piece of gear for the bench which is probably the most used gear and most important for most people is the multimeter this is where you don't have to spend a lot of money at all now if you're a professional or you need to measure high energy high voltage type circuits I would certainly recommend you getting a much more expensive meter such as a fluke or a key sight which is designed to be safe to handle that however on the bench where you're just playing around with smaller voltages these things are really amazing for what you can get for the price and I've had very good luck with them. They seem to be reliable. This one here is newer. I haven't had the time with it, but these other meters have been very good indeed. They're very reasonably accurate. And like I said, you get all this functionality in one package here. I would however recommend buying at least two meters because there's always going to be a situation where you need to measure two voltages or a voltage in a current and you'll have that capability having a couple meters on the bench there's a lot of very inexpensive devices like this component tester which is proven to be very useful to have on the bench and you can pick those things up for under twenty dollars a function generator this is another place you don't have to spend a lot of money but do be aware that with these cheap function generators they might have issues and they may not be they may not have the bandwidth I should say that they're labeled with for example this is rated 24 megahertz and it does go up to that but it's distorted and at much less amplitude this is more of a 10 megahertz device and I have to, I don't remember my measurements, but it, around 10 megahertz, I think, it started falling off, getting more distorted. And this particular model has that small electrical leakage due to a capacitor in the power supply. You would have to ground your uh, shells of your connector to earth ground to get rid of that. But it works, and it's useful, so yeah, I'd recommend that. And these are usually in the $60 range. Some things like power supplies that are simple, you can build them yourself. I built this preamp because, you know, on my channel I deal a lot with audio. So I needed this little preamp that provides enough voltage, output voltage for some of the circuits and amplifiers I test. And it's been very helpful to have on the bench. So you can save by buying a kit or just design and building it yourself. You could get all of this stuff here for under $150. I mean, if you do build some of it, that might save you. But yeah, that's really only $150 or less for all of that equipment right there. Last but not least, you'll need some storage bins. I got a few of them on my bench. And I built this little equipment rack. It wasn't very much at all. You'll need tools, little screwdrivers, and various small hand tools such as this, soldering iron, and you probably want to get some component kits like resistors and capacitors. All that stuff is pretty inexpensive to buy. I would put another $150 on the budget for those items. Okay, let's tally the results. So I'll say you'd get a $400 scope, $125 power supply, a budget for your multimeter and basic test equipment is $150. In my case, a little bit high on that because, you know, my meters will say they're $60. This multi-component tester might be $15. The uh, Filtech function generator is $60 so I actually would have money left over and you can apply that to a better scope or you know better soldering iron or things like that uh, tool soldering and storage I'm saying $150 
and to make it a nice round number I added another 75 to other miscellaneous things you want to buy you know of course you can take that money and apply it to a better scope or you know whatever so we end up with a total of $900 spent quite a bit less than the other video where we spent $2,500 of course you get much nicer gear but you would have to question yourself if you would need nicer gear so I hope this helps you out and thanks for watching.